YouTube is going on. I hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing today. I'm super excited for this video because I get to spend time with you guys and answer some of your questions on can ingredients change the porosity of your hair? Like can you go from low to high based off of a conditioner or a moisturizer? And then number two, let's talk about alcohols. Are they good? Are they bad? And then last but not least, does the position of an ingredient on the ingredient label actually matter? So stay tuned. Okay, so when it comes to if ingredients can actually change the porosity of your hair, yes and no. And I say yes because there are some factors involved, but then I say no because the majority of ingredients that we work with in hair care formulations are either designed to put moisture into the hair or seal the cuticle. Now for the four factors that are involved that can change your porosity, number one, of course, chemical services. So things like relaxers and getting color on your hair can definitely alter the cuticle and raise the cuticles up because in order for them to effectively work, they have to alter the hair to get into the hair and do what they're supposed to do. So that's number one. Number two is going to be pH because the higher the pH of a hair care formulation, the more your hair is going to open up cuticle wise. It's going to lift up. Now, when it comes to formulating hair care products, and the industry there are some safety tests involved where the pH needs to be between 4.5 and 5.5 which is pretty acidic but our hair is naturally on the acidic side now let's say by some chance a conditioner hits the shelf and it's like at a pH of 12 now that can definitely affect your hair and make your hair more porous aka higher porosity the third thing that is involved is practices like how do you take care of your hair are you rough with your hair when you comb it and you brush it are your fingers always in your hair? That can also affect the cuticle as well. And then last but not least, of course, you guys already know, hyper fatigue. Excessive amounts of water can definitely swell the hair and then lift the cuticles up as well. Now, when it comes to alcohols in our hair care products, you have two different kinds. You have your fatty alcohols and then you have your drying alcohols. Your fatty alcohols are going to be like your acetyl alcohol, your satiro, behenol, uh, sterile alcohol, stuff like that are going to be fatty and when I say fatty I want you to think of oils and lipids it's a fat it's an oil and they are derived typically from plants and sometimes animals as well now the cool thing about fatty alcohols is that number one they provide lubrication to the hair manageability they soften the hair and for the formula they're great for thickening up the formula as well as making it more stable so fatty alcohols are good for the hair on the flip side you have your drying alcohols and you'll see them more so in hairspray because alcohol like ethanol or SD alcohol is actually a solvent in the formula of a hairspray. So meaning it helps to dissolve the styling polymers. When I say styling polymers, I mean that spray that's supposed to add hold to your hair or shine to your hair. Those are specific polymers that need to be dissolved in alcohol in order for them to actually spray out. Now, in the case of using a hairspray, because sometimes they can be kind of drying, I would recommend to add just a little bit of oil on your hair before you spray your hair and the oil is going to act as a protecting layer so it won't be as drying when you do use your hairspray. Now the last thing is does the position of the ingredient on the ingredient label on the bottle actually determine where it is on the formula? Short answer is yes. By law, we have to share what we're using. We have to share the ingredient, but we don't have to share the actual formula or the actual percentage, but you guys can get an idea of what it is inside the formula. So that's why I always tell people, look at the first five or six ingredients because that's gonna be the majority of that formula. Now, what does concern me is when I do see brands put extracts or certain oils before the water, that concerns me because I'm like, that can't be right because extracts are typically in formulas at very, very small amounts. And if you create a shampoo and your first ingredient is oil, that's a little concerning as well because when you're creating a shampoo, water is the most abundant within a shampoo. But that's for another video, okay? So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this super quick video. Any questions, let me know. I have a question for you. What video content do you guys want to see? What other topics? Um, I'm 
debating right now between the curly girl method, like sharing my opinion on it, and then just sharing some more things about ingredients. But I wanna hear from you, so put that below in the comment box and I will see it. And in the meantime, definitely be sure to check out the Curly Girl's Guide to Hair Care Ingredients if you haven't done so already. And be sure to subscribe, like, make sure notifications are on, and follow me on Instagram for more curly chemistry content, and check out the website as well while you're there. All right, I love you guys, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.